In this episode of the Pinball Workshop, we're going to take another look at board repair for Williams System 9 games. So last time when we left this, uh, we had four different boards that we were looking at, and we got the logic side of the board working successfully. Now we're going to concentrate on our lamps and our solenoid sections, and let's walk through those and see if we can determine if everything's working appropriately. So that's what we're going to do today. Stay tuned. So let's pick up where we left off last time. Now the board that we're looking at, I believe is board number one. So this was the original board that I got um, as part of a deal for four boards. And this one has our sorcerer ROMs in the, uh, in the three ROM configuration. So just to test this again, we'll turn it on. We hear the relay fire and we see that we've got that zero. So again, confirming that the board logic looks good from this side. But now I want to kind of concentrate on the other side of the board. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to turn this back off. And I'm going to be using, and let me see if this is not, let me move this over and up. And what we're going to be showing is a new piece of equipment that I bought recently, which is this Eventech variable power supply, DC power supply. Now, you're probably wondering, Adam, but you have this power supply with the whole DEF on it. Why do you need a second one? Well, in order to bench test a Williams System 9 game, you need to provide an additional 18 volts VDC to the lamp matrix so that it can run appropriately. Now, there are people who will take transformers out of games, take um, power supply boards and build like a test fixture. And that's ultimately what I would do if I'm testing out a bunch of these boards or if I'm fixing boards in terms of uh, re repair services. But in this, I just wanted an extra variable power supply. These are cheap. I think I paid 50 bucks for this on uh, Amazon. And I want to be able to provide that type of power back over to our lamp matrix. So what I'll do first is uh, on our... Uh, uh, power supply here. Uh, let me just make sure I've got my hot lead somewhere not wrapped around my finger. Um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and we'll turn it on and then we'll see that we've got our 18 volts DC. Uh, you've got your coarse and your fine. So coarse to really set your voltage appropriately. You're fine just to do very slight changes in that. But let's go ahead and get back to 18 volts. All right, so we've got our 18 volts there. Now what we'll do is go ahead and hook up our 18 volts to our Williams System 9 board. Let me just readjust the camera so we can see this. All right, so what we'll do here, uh, I know already from looking at the schematics, that our system nine board is going, our, our lamp matrix input for voltage is going to be right here for plus 18 VDC. I'm just choosing one of the eight. They all provide power, but you just need to supply it to one part of the lamp matrix. And then our ground, I'll just go ahead and do the same thing uh, over here as well. Now the final piece uh, that I want to show you today is this little utility. So this is the lamp matrix display tester. Uh, this comes from a company called Siegecraft. I actually featured this company earlier in a video uh, using the Bally display filter boards for LEDs. So same company. They make this great little diagnostic tool. And what this is going to show us is this gives us an 8x8 matrix and little LEDs to basically simulate what happens during a game. So instead of having your controlled lamps uh, on your play field, uh, you're going to see those uh, on this little guy. And the great thing about this is he's actually replicated the actual matrix display uh, that you would see from that playful harness, wiring harness. So what I'll do here is I've already got my wiring harness here set up to work for System 9. All I'll need to do is to plug it in. All right. So let's see, make sure everybody can see. I'm going to turn this light out so we'll be able to see. And if you concentrate here on this back, uh, let's go ahead and turn on some power. 
Sometimes we got to do the quick. And there we go. So now we're seeing our lamp matrix, uh, <clears throat> you know, just as you would see from the lights at, uh, you know, you know, during a game, you're able to see this here. Now, I could take this out, put in the Leon Testerom, and we would see this flash where the entire 8x8 matrix would flash. But in this case, this kind of starts to give me an idea if we've got any lamps that are out or any lamps that are having issues. Uh, I could still always use uh, my test array to try to figure out if there's something else uh, by going into the diagnostics and flashing the lamps. But this is already telling me that I've got some issue with this, uh, which is column three here. So it looks like that's something that I need to look at and figure out what's going on. Before I start to diagnose the lamp matrix issue, it's always good to come back to the manual, take a look and make sure that we look at the right thing. So the quickest place to go is to look at what we call the lamp matrix. Now remember, there's two types of lamps that exist in a pinball machine. You have your general illumination. Uh, those are going to be your lamps that, uh, you know, turn on when the game turns on, uh, usually stay illuminated during the entire play of the game. Unless, you know, there, there's some variances to that. Uh, System 9's brought in in the space shuttle uh, way for you can have a GI relay to turn the lights off. But the most part, GI lights kind of come on and stay on. That's a great way to think about it. Uh, your lamp matrix table is going to be all your, what we call your controlled lamps. So every time that you have maybe an insert that lights up, some back box. So you have your, your game over lamp, your match or tilt that on, on the back box board. Anything of that nature, you're, you're going to get your controlled lamp matrix. So what we saw a moment ago is it looked like this column right here. Remember, we had our one, two, and three on our columns. This column was not lighting on our test board. So what I want to be able to do is start to kind of go through this and look to see where um, 1J73 is at. So reading schematics, I will tell you, is something that it, it, it takes a little time to get used to, um, to kind of understand. There's a lot of great videos on reading schematics. Uh, I don't want to cover that in this specific video, but I think it's important to don't be intimidated about what you're looking at. The great thing is you have to understanding is that the the board is broken down in really specific modules. You know, we have we talked about the logic side, we talked about the, the lamp side and the solenoid side. And again, that's gonna vary between different boards. Earlier boards, you could theoretically say is a little more simplistic. As you get into newer boards, uh, and especially I think of the things like Capcom boards or even Daddy Esports, there, there's a little bit of a different thought that needs to be done there. But in this case, this is pretty straightforward especially when working on uh, lamp matrix issues. So let's just take a look in real here and we can find um, 1J3, which is strobe three right here. And one thing I wanna start doing first is that you have these different transistors. You have these, I guess they're drive transistors that are tip 42 transistors. And we see here we have Q25. That's the last thing before we go out to the pin is become out this transistor on Q25. So two things I want to check is I want to always work my way from the connector or from the connector pin into the machine. Uh, I find that's best. A lot of people will jump directly to a connector and that makes, or not connector, but to a transistor. And that's very common. These transistors here are known to fail over time. Uh, but you may have to work your way all the way through all the components back to your, your, your logic gate chips and even back to the PIA. So there has been points where I've done diagnostics where I've gone and had to actually fix something at the PIA. So I don't think we're back that far. I, I think that it's probably this transistor, but I want to check and make sure. So let's do that together. So I'll have to undo all the board. I have all my power turned off. And the first thing I can do is I'll flip this over. Actually, let me take these off just so I don't bend. Oh, these are a little tight, so. These are the connectors you have to stand up for to get any type of leverage. <laughs> and this board is, uh, as you can see here, we've actually lost all the clips on this connector. So this connector definitely needs to be replaced before I put this back into a machine. All right, so remember, we, we start here. It's hard to tell. We have one through nine. We've got our key pin of eight. We know that this is our lamp uh, columns here. So I had one 
it was 1J7-3, so that's 1J7. That's really hard to read here, but you can see this says 1J6. This is 1J7, and then you start pin 1, pin 2, pin 3. So that pin right there is for column 3. Now what I can do here is I can take my DMM. Uh, real quickly, I'll make my life a little bit easier. I'll put my alligator clip here. And these are great. These little fast-changing clips, or fast-changing leads, are really great when you're doing work and having to move between those. I'm going to put that on... Put that on three, and my daughter is talking, telling me a story, so I'm going to turn her down. All right. I'm going to shift this to continuity. All right. And so I want to go find Q25 on this board. And I actually kind of know it's going to be in this general area. It's going to be hard to see, but Q25, let's see if I can pick the board up, but is actually right there. Q25. So... I believe that I can go straight from this Q25. Yeah, Q25 right there. So I know that I have no broken trace. I can get to from the Q25 off to the pin. So I know that's good. So the next thing I want to do is, since I've confirmed that trace is still valid, I want to be able to test the transistor. So there's a lot of ways to check transistors. Uh, going into diode mode is the best way uh, to check a transistor. Now I will tell you is checking, checking transistors in line, uh, sometimes you'll get oddities, but for the most part, I, I found that it, it, it really kind of gets you going the right direction. So what we'll want to do is I want to flip this board over, kind of watch where I am. <laughs> Too much stuff in the way. So it's this right here. We turn this around. We confirm again I'm in the right area. All right, I believe right there is Q25. So what I want to do is I want to now be able to test Q25. I'll just, so you can see the multimeter. Let's see the board. All right. <clears throat> So the great thing about all these different transistors, at least for uh, the TIP 42s, which are these drive transistors for the, the column row, or the columns and rows for the lamp matrix, is that I'm gonna be able to test and then confirm off another one that we know is working in the board. So go right here, uh, I'm gonna test this. I see that I have some level of continuity. I'm gonna test this side. I've got a level of continuity. I think I got, let me make sure I got the right one here. I don't have the right one because I am off by turning the board Q25. Okay, so Q25 is actually right here. Make sure that's it. Yeah, these three pins right here. So what I can do is I can check the, a variety of ways in diode mode here. I can check with uh, black middle, and then on the outsides, I get no continuity, which is correct. And then if I swap, put red on middle and then check black, I've got continuity. Check here. Ooh, that's a problem. I don't have any continuity there. I've got an open line. So let's go ahead and check. Um, let's check the one right next to it. So we'll put the red on that middle uh, and then we'll check. That's good. Let's check on the right. That's good. So let's just confirm. Let's switch. Black on middle. Open line. Open line. So this one's good. This one is bad. One side of this transistor is bad. So next step is to pull out the gun and pull this transistor off. So again, on this point, I've got a parts board that I may end up using. I I think I've got a ton of tip 42s though. Uh, I do, but I may use that parts board and go ahead and, and, and harvest a tip 42 and then bring that over here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I've got my Heiko gun here. I've got my donor board and you can see from the corrosion. Uh, and I've got this general area where the, uh, the tip 42s are now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and harvest one uh, I think I got my eye on one here that I'm going to go ahead and hit. All 
All right, come on, dude. All right. Let's see, we'll go ahead and pop that guy out. And there we go. So before I put this tip 42 back in, let's just do a quick check, make sure it's good. So we're not just wasting time. So let's put in the middle here. It's good here. Hmm. This one is perhaps bad too. All right, let's pull a new one from stock. Make sure I'm not just wasting a bunch of time here. So let's take a look at a new one. So I'll put red, blue, or red, black. Oh, yeah, I'm on the right one. Yeah, red, black. Good. Nothing. So maybe that one isn't bad. Okay, well, let's try this. I am going to use my other little tester here. This is my little does everything tester. Let's just see if this is showing bad. Nope, that one is showing good. All right, so we may not have a problem with that connect that uh, transistor. So let's go and see if that is the case. Let me see if we can't pull out this guy. Be a booger, I can tell. I'm gonna get my soldering iron on. Let that heat up. Let's try to hit this one more time. All right, there we go. So this is Q25 uh, that we've got right here that I've pulled out. So let's use our little test board again because that thing is sometimes handy. And this is just a little quick eBay item. Uh, I'll probably do a tech and tools video on this as well. But uh, we'll just drop this in, hit the ziff down. Mmm. It says it's good. So that was not the problem. So I had to keep moving forward to see where else it could be. So let's go ahead and put this guy back in. It's odd that the other one was showing, again, testing out a circuit. Uh, sometimes, you know, testing out a circuit is always gonna be the, the winner. In this case, I got a little bamboozled by it. You know, it happens. So I just need to go ahead and put this guy back in. Aha, and I do have some captain tape now. So let's get a little bit of that so I can actually hold this guy in appropriately. That works, I don't need a lot. Uh, quick tip for me is that uh, once you get one leg started, uh, from there you can just get the rest of it going the right direction. So let me show you a little tip. So just got a little bit of solder here. I'm gonna tin and then connect it back. All right. Now let's say for example, I'm gonna go look. Uh, it's actually pretty. It's pretty standing up very well, but if it wasn't standing up or kind of protruding a little bit, 
just by doing one uh, one pin, I can then fix it, push it in, out, up, down, re, you know, get it back in the right way, and then finish my soldering after I've completed that. So great solder job. All right, so that was not part of the problem. So let's go look at our schematics and see what else we can find. Okay, so we've pulled our schematics back out and let's take a look again. So Q25, which I thought could be a potential problem was not. From Q25, we go into R105. So that's one of the giant resistors here that then feeds into Q17. So let's check and see, make sure that, that trace, the traces are good, and also to see if that resistor is good. So the first thing I want to do is I want to again follow my path. So I start at uh, let me make sure everybody can see here. I am in continuity mode. I went from 1J3. 1J, yep, there we go. And then from here, I'm going over to this to RO5, which is right here. And then from RO5, I go to Q17. So everything's connected, so that's good. So that tells me that I've eliminated the traces to Q17. Now I gotta figure out if R105 is good. <clears throat> now, these are the resistors up here uh, for R105. These are, uh, I think they're two watt resistors, if I remember correctly. I'd have to go back and look. But if we check these, we can actually see if there's, oh, yeah, switch over to resistance. There we go. I can check, let's see, here's R111. I think it's uh, 30 ohms. Yeah, it's close enough. Uh, let's check R113. Thirty ohms. Okay, let's go check R105. In here. Hmm. So we get nothing. Nothing for R105. So the next thing we do is let's remove R105, test it out of circuit, even though it should work. It should be testing the same way, but let's test it out of circuit, and then if so, replace it. R105. This one right here. Now, sometimes these will get so hot that they'll actually desolder themselves from the board. But we don't know that right now, and I want to just take it off to see if there is a potential, because it doesn't necessarily look very healthy. So let's just take a look. So here's R105. Again, let's now test it out of circuit and see if we get our, I believe, 27 to 30 ohms, somewhere in that general range. Uh, and when I'm lazy, so I'm going to switch to my alligator clip, so one side is easier to hold. And then let's test. Four kilo ohms. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's right. Let's uh, reconfirm one more time. And then we're going to go check and see. All right. So it says it's 4.3 kilo ohms. I don't think that's right, but I need to confirm. Let's go back to our manual, R105. Should be 27 ohms at 2 watts, not 4.4 kilo ohms. So something doesn't seem to be right with that. So let's do this. We'll take out this, and let's go harvest, because I don't think I have any of these left. Uh, we're going to have to harvest one, I believe. And let's bring our donor board back in, which I think our donor board actually has some relatively new ones on the... Uh, on the board so we may just pull the newest ones off but let's check and see uh so let's just go in here real quickly let's check an old one make sure that we can get in there 
All right, so yeah, 27 ohms. I was thinking it was 30, but 27 is correct. So let's take that R115 off. I'm just gonna take this one since it matches the rest. And someone has obviously done some rework on these before on this old donor board. So let's just pull them off. Oh, some terrible rework. Look at this thing. Giant solder block. Try to pull off what I can and then probably come back with a soldering iron and I don't even see the oh, there's a hole. Let's see if I can get over here and actually find one. Yeah, this is kind of a mess on this guy. So let's see if we can. Okay. One side's off. I'm gonna take my soldering iron. See if I can heat. There we go. So we'll take that off. Goodbye, parts board or donor board. Put you back in the pile of unloved things. Let's double check this one more time to make sure that it is good. Yeah. So it's definitely the uh, the the high resistance of that resistor. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, of this old one is garbage. Let's see if I make the trash can. I did, hooray! All right, let's bring our board back. So here's our board. I'm gonna just kind of clean up. Get the rest of this old solder off the leads just to make it nice and clean. So it'll go in the hole. All right. Let's try to get this guy back in its home. So it's a little bit harder on these ones because it just, they get so worn out over time. And I should have a new one. I should just put a new one in, but to be fair, Sometimes it just doesn't make sense when you're in a rush. <laughs> All right, so I want to make sure I do. Now, for this sorcerer game that this game is going into, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using LEDs. So a lot of the heat that's being generated from these lamps are are going to be much, uh, much, uh, much less than than what is needed. But I still like to put in the uh, these parts and like to get them in appropriately. Go in your home. Yeah, some of these resistors are so bad they're actually losing their coating on top. Not a good sign. Let's make sure that we're in. I can feel you. Apologies if this is hard to see at the moment. Uh, need a pair of needle nose. So I've got this back. There we go. Let's see if I can get that the stick in there now. There we go. Now, oh, it's good. Give that a little bit of a some more solder. Got a piece I just cut off here. Let's solder this back. Oh, I lost the side. All right, so we've got that in there. We found a problem with the board, uh, <clears throat> with this resistor. Let's turn everything back over, plug it in, and see if that column three is now working.
All right, so we've got our board all hooked back in. We've got uh, our power. I'm going to turn on, go ahead and start our 18 volts, which is not plugged in now because I unplugged it because I'm smart. Hashtag too smart. Even worse when the thing's unplugged on the back. All right, let's go ahead. Let's turn on the board. Bounce it. Aha! Victory! Looks like that's working great. Hmm, but now it looks like I've got another potential issue with uh, column seven that I need to look into. So this shows you, hey, we had an issue, we fixed the board, uh, and now we've got more issues to look at. Let's see if I get a little bit closer here so we can see that. So actually it needs to be mounted this way, but uh, just a little hard to turn because uh, System 9 decided to put things in reverse order. So now I gotta look at column seven and let's see if we can figure out what's going on with it. So I did a little looking and actually if you'll watch long enough, part of the light show column seven does light up. So I start to feel like that I don't necessarily think it's a problem. Let's take a look on the lamp matrix and see what column seven is supposed to be. And maybe there's, it has a specific reason on why. Yeah, so it's 2x, 4x, 8s, left target, back glass effect. So now we can see it actually lighting up. It's got some back glass effects. Um, we see that lighting. So actually, I think column seven is good. So, lamp matrix, this board, ready to go, ready to put in the machine. Next time on the pinball workshop, watch out, light. We're going to talk about. Everyone's favorite. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the solenoids. Because, as we know, as many problems as a lamp matrix have, solenoids can have exactly the same problem. You've got these chips over here that can be blown. Uh, they have not been replaced here, but they're very common issues. Again, you've got transistors, you've got resistors. Uh, in fact, this one transistor mm, doesn't look very healthy right now. So let's dive into that, but we'll do that next time. So for that, this has been Pimble Workshop. Adios.